So let's get this done. Let's get this done. And you know, I'm not here to, to tell you what's in your best interest, but I am here to say that the decision you make, the work you put into it, will impact people who you may never meet, people who may never know your names, but because of what you have done and are prepared to do, their lives will forever be better. When we look at this slogan, that's about health, it's about jobs, it's about justice, that represents some of the most important voices in America that must be heard cannot be overlooked. Raphael and John will do that. They will do that. This will not be easy. And it is within our power to change the course of the history of this country. Changing the balance in the United States Senate, which is what this election will do, will make all the difference about everything that they have talked to you about on this very stage this afternoon as it relates to Medicare and Medicaid and expansion here in Georgia, it would expand coverage for over 500,000 people, half a million people, depending on the outcome of this election. Joe Biden and I are saying, look, in places like Columbus, up and down Georgia, we've got Title I funded schools, which are the schools in the neighborhoods with some of the lowest tax base. And because our system is still kind of messed up, we fund school districts based on the tax base of a community, which of course means that in those communities that have the highest needs, they often have the fewest resources. We got to deal with that. One of the ways Joe and I intend to do that is to triple Title I funding. But we need Raphael and John in the United States Senate to see that through. We are talking about respecting the need of all Americans to have economic health and well-being in a way that they have the dignity of being able to raise their families knowing that their hard work pays off. So Joe and I are talking about what we need to do to make sure that folks who are first-time home buyers get a $15,000 tax credit to be able to put a down payment or closing cost to buy a home. But we need the support and the votes to do that. We're talking about how we've got to support our small businesses. You know here in Georgia, our small businesses, our black-owned businesses, are part of the economic lifeblood of our community. And they're closing. Part of how we got to get dealing with this moving forward is we need to make sure that our small businesses with an emphasis on our minority-owned businesses have access to capital. So Joe and I have got a plan for that. We need the votes in the Senate. We need Raphael and John there. when we're talking about what we need to do as it relates to equal justice under law. Those words are inscribed in that beautiful marble building called the United States Supreme Court. It's an ideal that we know we will always fight for and have not yet reached. And so we need to have folks who understand the importance of reforming our criminal justice system, reforming policing, doing what must be done to say, let us ban choke holes and carotid holes, George Floyd would be alive today. Let us have a national standard for use of force. Let us require that as a nation we run our laws in a way that take into account the real history of America and do what is necessary to right what has been wrong. To do that, we will need the legislation to be passed. We will need John and Raphael in the United States Senate. These are the things that are at stake. And so I traveled here. I got to go back. I'm voting on that COVID package tonight in DC. But, uh, but I, of course, and I will be voting for it. But I wanted to come and visit with you 
before Christmas, before Christmas, to ask that among the things that you plan to do for Christmas, we all have our traditions, so many of us, our traditions have been changed because of the virus and what we need to do to be safe. But in the spirit of this season, in the spirit of the celebration of a birth that taught us that it is within the power of an individual to leave this world better than we found it. Let us use these days leading up to January 5th in the spirit of all that is good and right to make sure everyone we know understands their power, that they understand what is at stake. And my final point is this, 2020, you know, we got all kinds of words for it, most of which we should not say in front of children. Um, and like I said, I think 2020 will truly be over on January 5th. And that being said, Columbus, this moment will pass. This moment will pass. This moment of loss, this moment of so many crises hitting so hard, it will pass. And years from now, our children, our grandchildren, and others will look in our eyes, each one of us, they'll look in our eyes and they will ask us, where were you at that moment in time? Where were you? And what I know we all will be able to tell them is so much more than just how we felt at this moment. We will tell them what we did. We will tell them we were hanging out at Bib Mill, that we were hanging out with John and Raphael. Kamala came and paid us a visit. We will tell them that we organized, that we reminded people to vote early, and we will tell them we elected the next senators to the United States Senate. That is what we will tell them. Thank you, Columbus.